Hope you're having a wonderful day. So today I will be discussing how we at Cubespace uh, use ANSYS, specifically sort of in an application basis where we design an adapter bracket for um, vibration testing. So this is not all the uses we use ANSYS for, but just one of the common uses we have for ANSYS. So a little bit of context about Cubespace. So we are a company that specializes in attitude determination and control systems for CubeSats as well as into the micro satellite uh, world. So our components have been in orbit since uh, 2014 when we had our first flight. And at this stage, there are over 50 missions or satellites with our products flying around uh, the, in orbit. And we're based in Stellenbosch and we are globally reaching many clients, so hundreds of clients all over the world. So we have quite a, quite a big reach of clientele. But uh, let's not go too much into what we do as Cubespace, but specifically what we sort of use answers for. So um, with regards to vibration testing, um, a quick overview I want to discuss is that um, we base all our component designs on mission requirements as well as NASA and European Space Agency requirements. So they're very stringent in that um, there's a vibration qualification that needs to be done, there's thermal vacuum qualification, radiation and many other environmental tests. So vibration testing is just a sort of subset that uh, we're looking at here today. So once we've uh, designed a component, we need to just qualify to ensure it actually meets those requirements and uh, give assurance to the customer thereof. So in our vibration qualification, it usually requires sort of an intense uh, random vibration as well as a sinusoidal vibration. And this is done on each of its uh, the components, three major axes. And uh, when we actually put the component under vibration, the, the ideal state is to have it mounted as it would be in the structure of the satellite or spacecraft. So that leads us to the reason for having to design a dedicated adapter bracket for each product or component that we have to put through vibration qualification. So in this case, what we're going to be looking at is a reaction wheel pyramid. So this is a design of our own. Um, and was done to meet certain customer requirements. Um, so I won't go too much into the detail of that, but um, basically it's a, we have four sort of mass uh, components mounted in a pyramid configuration, and that's just a specific angle that the wheel's tilted at and then four of them mounted together. On the right, you can sort of see the, the blue holes that are highlighted is what is used to mount the structure to the satellite. Um, then in terms of our vibration facilities, we have our own vibration facility in-house. Uh, the picture on the right sort of gives an overview of what it is. It's just a single axis, which in this case is vertically orientated vibration shaker um, with an adapter plate, what you see on the left, uh, mounted on top of it. So it gives us a, a grid of M8 holes at a center of about 40 millimeters to mount on our various vibration adapter brackets. So with this in mind, um, there's a couple of requirements that comes into our testing or, or the bracket sort of design for testing. So all our testing is done in the range of zero to 2000 hertz. And this is based on the rocket um, vibration outputs. Most of the harmful vibrations occur within that zero to 2000 hertz range. So this is the, the range that we test in and qualify our products within. So for this reason, the test bracket needs to have its first modes outside of that range. So at minimum, we prescribe the first mode of frequency at being um, nothing below 2,200 hertz. Then the second requirement is that the test bracket needs to allow for the mounting of, in this case, the reaction wheel pyramid in three orthogonal axes, so three different ways of mounting it. And then lastly, to avoid overstressing of the actual vibration shaker, we need to ensure that the center of gravity of the vibration bracket, as well as the device under testing, the reaction wheel pyramid, has its center of gravity as close as possible to the center of the coil of the shaker. So we, as a safe sort of uh, estimate, say, as long as it's within a radius of you no know, bigger than five millimeter shaker, it, it should be fine. So that won't put any undue stress onto the vibration shaker. So onto the test bracket. So the initial concepts uh, are shown here on the left and right hand side. So um, in this case, there's 
what looks to be two different mounting rotations. Uh, the one on the left um, allows for two axes to be tested because we can just rotate the wheel 90 degrees. And this is a result of the reaction wheel pyramid having a symmetrical design. So it saves us a little bit of effort there. And on the right is the, the other third axis um, mounting arrangement. So as you can see, it's with a vibration bracket, we're trying to keep it as sturdy as possible. And that's why we go with a, a one-piece design. So machining out of a solid uh, block of aluminum. Uh, moving on to the analysis, um, as we're interested specifically in the vibration test bracket, we've not modeled great in detail the reaction wheel pyramid. So in this case, we've idealized it as a remote mass with the correct inertia properties and scoped it to the mounting holes uh, which would be used on the bracket to secure the actual reaction wheel pyramid. Then we've, uh, for the M8 holes for securing the bracket to the actual vibration adapter plate or the plate on the shaker, we've fixed those. And then to idealize sort of the, the support that the plate would um, have onto the base of the test bracket, we've put a, a displacement constraint. So yes, this is maybe too optimistic, giving a bit more stiffness, but we found it to be the better approximation than just um, uh, fixing the, the holes, the M8 holes for fixing the bracket to the, the vibration shaker. So it, it gives us the, the sort of best uh, balance of the, from what we've seen. So moving on to uh, the actual results. So we did uh, two test cases, one of them being with the reaction wheel mounted onto the face you see on the left, and that's sort of the worst case. And as you can see here, um, unsurprisingly, that unsupported uh, face in the front, that um, bends out first in your first modal um, shape. And that one has a frequency of about 2,400 hertz, which is good. It's higher than our limit of uh, 2,200. And in all honesty, it's beneficial to treat that mode as far as you can. So in this case, because we just wanted one bracket to do all our three axes we needed to test it, um, we've sort of hollowed out the inside part of it. In, in general, most of the test brackets we do are a solid block, as heavy as we can get it. Not necessarily aim to get it heavy, but large mass of aluminium, just to ensure that our modal frequencies are very high. And then looking at the second case, when the reaction wheel pyramid is mounted within the test bracket, um, unsurprisingly, the modal frequency is increased and it's sitting at about 3,700 hertz, which is also above our limit of 2,200 hertz. So it's a, it's a very preliminary analysis, but this goes to show the one as aspect of ANSYS which we like, being able to quickly iterate on designs of test brackets, as well as looking at the actual vibration analysis. So a large portion of our work is looking at a vibration uh, analysis. Um, we also use uh, the random vibration tool with an ANSYS to give us an idea of components when mounted into the satellite and how they would respond, um, especially also then looking at potentially what load amplification we could see through the structure of the satellite, um, as this is something that is really of paramount importance when designing a structure. And uh, we assist our clients through this by being able to do these simulations. So. Uh, that is it on our side, um, and I'm glad to take any questions. Thank you.